and it's probably like 98 percent, something like that. I just guess at 98 percent. And therefore, you might say, "Hey, I was, I've been able to explain why people die by drowning. That means that the the more the ice, those people that eat a lot of ice cream, they get stomach cramps, and therefore they, they die by drowning. Or maybe it's the opposite. When you do a, when you do a correlate, when you calculate it, you know, y equals b zero plus b one x. If you change the x and y, and by the way, it's one of the small challenges of the problem. If you change the x and the y around, you're going to get a different answer. But the correlation, because the formula has the x and the y are perfectly symmetric, if you change the x and y around, you're going to get the exactly the same answer. So for the correlation, it comes out the same. So, so we say, so there are three possibilities here. Either the ice cream has an impact on that. Otherwise, the more you eat ice cream you eat, the more likely you are to, to die by drowning, which is not too re realistic. The other possibility is that the death by people who die by drowning, the next day in the newspaper, the, paper, the newspaper said, like, a lot of people died yesterday by drowning. And therefore, people read that newspaper article, get depressed, and then they start eating a lot of ice cream because they're depressed. That's, what, that's a possibility. I don't think it's realistic, but that's a possibility. And of course, the third possibility is that nothing, none of these two things happening, that even though there's a perfectly, a very high correlation between them, it does not cause, you really can't jump to the conclusion of causality. In other words, people think that because two variables are highly related, that means that somebody's height has an impact on their weight. Well, in the case of height and weight, that happens to be true. But in the case of ice cream and death by drowning, it's not true. So that the, point that I'm, the point I'm trying to make now is a very important point in interpreting correlation. Just because you have a high correlation or a high R squared, you can't jump to the conclusion that you have a high, uh, you, have a, you've, you discovered a causal mechanism that one has a direct impact on the other. So now can somebody explain why you might in fact get this kind of data and yet it doesn't mean that X and Y are both highly related. It means something, what's, 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 the, what's really going on here? That there's not causality, C A U S. Causality is not the interpretation in this particular case because it's, it's not it's true. The truth is, somebody eating ice cream doesn't have an impact on the, the amount of drowning. Yes. And the fact is, they are independent. I'm trying to point this. They're, they're in. They're, 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 in fact, the fact is, X and Y have nothing to do with each other. But when you graph them, you're going to get like almost a perfect correlation. It seems to contradict our whole chapter. Yes, Nick. Okay, so one is saying, uh, you're sort of saying it's just coincidental, but if you, if you did three, if I did three cities and it looked like this, you would say it's coincidental. But if you had 100 cities, it's not going to be coincidence. That's, in fact, the formula we learned about, about the p-value and about the significance of two variables that has an n in the formula. If you have a sample size of 100 and you get a line like this, there's clearly something happening here. It's not just coincidence. So, yes. No, this applies to this applies not the answer which the video didn't tear. It's a, it's related to the population. This is the whole country. We took a hundred take every single city. Say you have a thousand cities across the country, you get something like this. Nothing to do with it's the whole population, not specific. Yes, Alex. The, that's exactly it. That is a third variable here, you call a Z in fact is a good name for it, which is equal to the temperature. So those cities which have a high temperature are going to have a lot of people eating ice cream, a lot of people going swimming, and therefore there's going to be a lot of death by drowning. So those are going to be the cities over here. The, the cities that are cold, I assume people have less I eat less ice cream because it's cold, and therefore they have less, and also less people going swimming. So when you graph them, it looks like the two variables are related, but the fact of the matter is that's called a spurious relationship, and you have to, you know, a spurious relationship and in this case, that, that third variable, which we didn't bother collecting, but if we would have collected it, we would have realized right away that what's going on. So the third variable is temperature. Now, what if you do something like, I don't know, somebody's attitude towards, I don't know, politics and how they're going to vote. And you say, hey, there's a high correlation between those two things. That means I figured out somebody's attitude affects how they vote. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe it means that there's another variable that has an impact on their attitude and has another impact on their voting. The point I'm trying to make is that it's harder to interpret a correlation than simply saying, well, because there's a high correlation, it automatically means there's one causes the other. It may, in fact, be that one causes the other, but it may not be that. So you've got to watch out for that. Yes. Spurious. spurious means that it looks like there's a relationship, but it's not a real relationship. But the word spurious means like fake. It's just like not really. It's just apparent. Now, one other, since we're talking about correlation, I'll give you one other little warning about correlation. Let's say somebody collects data on X and Y. 
And the correlation between all those variables, basically there's no correlation. Remember, a blob of dots like a circle means there's no relationship. But one person in that particular set of data was extremely high on the x and extremely high on the y. Now let's go back to the formula, which again, I don't know, Brian, Brian, can you point to the formula for a second? The formula, one of the main parts of the formula is x times the y. You can go back now, Brian. And because of that, a, a large x times a large y is going to be a giant number. And that's going to have a, t a very overwhelming effect on the correlation. So when the computer, basically the correlation tries to see how close to a straight line is the data, the computer is going to see something like this. And it's going to say, hey, it's pretty much a straight line. And therefore, it might look like a correlation equals, I don't know, 0.80, when in fact there's really nothing going on. It's just one person calls an outlier that basically messed up your data. So the question is very difficult. How do you decide if something is truly an outlier or really, really belongs in a data set? It's really a difficult question that has no real answer. But the point is you have to watch out. You have to make a graph of your data. Another, since we're talking about this, let me do this quickly. Let's say, for example, your data looks like this. I pointed out to you early on in that this, this case, the correlation will turn out to be close to zero, when in fact there's definitely a relationship between the x and the y. Another thing to watch out for. Another thing to watch out for is something like this. You have, let's say you do male, the correlation between, in fact, this happens to be, I'll give you a real life example, which is very interesting. In fact, I did a, a research project on this. You have vitamin D levels, and you have the bone mineral density, how, basically how, how, how dense or how strong somebody's bones are. So for reasons that, that are not that clear, it turns out that if you take, let's say, a bunch of people, uh, the higher the vitamin D, the higher the bone. And the more vitamin D you have, the better, better your bones. But it's not really true. OK, here's what happens. It's only slightly true. It's true. The more, the more vitamin D, more or less, you're going to get the better bones. But, so if, but if you collect, for, for blacks, the vitamin D levels are, tend to be low, and their bones are stronger. So this, is, this, this happens to be the, the, the picture for, for black people. Or is the more the vitamin D, the more the bone den mineral density. But it's, you know, it's a weak relationship, but it's between X and Y. For whites, who happen to have higher levels of vitamin D, generally, because their white skin absorbs, absorbs the sunlight, but their bones are, are, are weaker or not as, not as strong. So this represents the picture for whites. This is a picture for whites. This is a picture for blacks. But when you throw both those sets, if you throw into the computer everybody's vitamin D and their BMD, in other words, pairs of numbers, where are we? Pairs of numbers. But you don't specify who's a black and who's a white, because sometimes, you, especially if you're not aware of the fact there's a difference between them, you're going to get what kind of a correlation? What's the computer going to print out? What kind of correlation? A negative correlation, R will be less than zero. What does that imply? That's, so if you've just read the results without knowing deeper what's going on, you would say, you know what? The more vitamin D you take, the weaker your bones, which of course is not true. So the point, the, the, the point is correlation is a very important formula. People calculate it all the time, like immediately, and they jump to conclusions about the, the relationship, the correlation, the correlationship between the X and the Y, when in fact it's more complicated than that, you really have to think about it for a few minutes or a few hours or a few months before you come to a conclusion.